Hey guys. I'm Jerry. I'm Sierra. We're ladies. And we tangent. Oh my god, wait. Oh, <laughs> dude. I gotta unsqueeze these. Dude, when I was being threatened by my asshole the other uh-huh. day, I pooped. I pooped at Alex's house. Mm-hmm. Then we were gonna go get Ollie. I had to stop at my dad's work. The cemetery. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I called him. I go, is your office open? Can I poop in it? I sure hope so because the other options, not good. <laughs> not good. And Alex's house to the cemetery, mm-hmm. not that far. No. Not that far at all. Mm-hmm. And so I liquid shitted there and then I liquid shitted at the cemetery <laughs> and then I found Tums in my car. Oh, hell yeah. And so that whole time, not only was it unbuttoned, unzipped. Yeah. I was banking on an old thickums to keep my jeans up. <laughs> well, there's so much that I have to tell you. So, and it goes with that. Okay. But we'll just. What's, What's up, up, everyone? everyone? Hello. Hello. I didn't want you to feel left out of the conversation, but let me just tell you that I unlocked. <laughs> How's your asshole? Leave it in the comments below. <laughs> I unlocked a brand new fear. Okay. And not a new fear. Something that I guess I never thought was was going to be something that I'd have to tackle. Okay. Um, with my asshole. <laughs> but tackle my asshole. <laughs> Here's what happened. Is I realized that I had to shit and it was coming like right now. Uh-huh. As I was, this might be a niche reference. And so I'm sorry, but you will get it. I'm sorry. It. I can't stop saying this in my head. Tackle my asshole is giving Lego my ego and like, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, go on. Don't get that out while okay. you can. <laughs> I was locked into the Peloton. Locked in. Oh, oh, no. oh no. Oh no. If you don't have a Peloton, this isn't an ad, I swear. Although I really do like, I love the Peloton. But if anything, that's an anti ad. I would say, so here's the deal because of the way that you can get going on the bike, they have, you have special shoes you have to uh-huh. get with the Peloton that lock you into the bike so you don't like hurt yourself. Yep. Um, and I was locked in. I wasn't even starting my workout yet, but I was like at the point where I was like, oh, I have to start. And then all, all of a sudden I was like, oh, I'm going to shit right now. <laughs> and I'm like trying to fucking kick myself <laughs> off the bike. Yeah, no! you, gotta, you have to break your own ankle to you get out do, of this. You do. You have to kick so aggressively. And I was like, the harder I kick, the more my sphincter was really about <laughs> to let loose. And then finally I was like, I'm just going to have to leave these bitches in there. I just... Take und- your shoes off. Yeah, yeah. I just I just abandoned you my right shoes. Out. Except for the one shoe did come off, so the other shoe didn't. So then <laughs> so I was walking like, like a horse. Clink, clink. I sounded like a horse <laughs> to the bathroom running. And then I called Corey and I was like, guess what the fuck just happened to me? <laughs> I'm was, never getting on that bike ever again. <laughs> Sell it. Absolutely wild. <laughs> no, I've been really into the Peloton. And I'll tell you why. I've been following someone on uh, TikTok. Okay. And their whole uh, their name's Hope, and I don't actually know what their handle is, and I'm sorry, but just type in Hope Peloton. No, it's Hope Cozy Cardio because oh. she does a cozy cardio thing where, like, in the morning she gets up, she gets her water, she drinks it, she makes like a protein coffee thing, okay. and then she like dims all the lights. She puts on like a diffuser mist, her favorite show, like a movie, uh-huh. and then. All these lighted candles and like just makes it a really cozy and then just does like light. I mean, it it's cardio for 30 minutes. Is she like going side to side like real <laughs> soft on that bike? Because it sounds hot. Well, it's tre- it's a tr- she does a treadmill oh. while she's doing it. I was I doing a, a Peloton. But that's what I'm saying. You could really modify cozy cardio. So that's yeah. why I kind of tried to. I want to like, dude, if you have not TM'd that, cozy cardio is genius. Uh, well, I think she might. Uh, there's a whole scandal about it because <gasps> she was on the Today Show or Good Morning America, one of those two, and they interviewed her for it, but then like gave the credit to another person, and like it, it talked to that. It's a whole thing. Wow. It's cozy cardio. <laughs> so that's Gate. actually how I, it's cozy cardio. Okay, <laughs> that's actually how I found her because of the the scandal. Yes, the scandal broke. Interesting. And then I went and looked at it, and I was like, "This is actually fucking awesome." I'm sorry about that scandal that's happening, but you are changing my life. And now because of the scandal, she's got mm-hmm. like over a million followers. That's amazing. So I'm like, it worked a little bit in her favor. I'm not gonna lie. Can I tell you know how when you get on TikTok? I don't get on TikTok much anymore. I love TikTok. Um, I've yes. been kind of scared of it lately, but understandable because. I got on I got on TikTok and immediately in the suggested things was like is Jerry from Ladies and Tangents okay? <laughs> and no. there were, and there were other ones being searched. <laughs> she sent them to me. If you and can I was imagine. Like, That's fucking wild. 
<laughs> I read yours to Corey and then mine to Corey that you sent me, and he was like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, I mean, if you wanted to go, you can go and look. Just type in Jerry Ladies and Tangents or something, or Sierra Ladies and Tangents, and it'll auto fill in what other people have searched. Very different. Very, very different. different. Very different. Very vibes. different. But then I was nervous. I clicked on all of them because I'm you like, did. well, yes, because I'm what like, is did. there something to find? <laughs> yeah. Are people making videos about my situation right now? Yeah. Turns out, no. And that's okay. not an invitation to do so. Don't either. do it. Don't, don't do, do that. Right now. Please don't, don't do, do that. Unless you're going to do like a thirst trap edit of me <laughs> or something, then I guess like go off. When but. I tell you that I have, I fantasized about my own thirst trap <laughs> in the car the other day because I was like, what would they do for me? I want right? that. I think I'm too goofy to have a thirst I trap. I mean, if I think anything, someone would try to like slow mo. Something that I've done. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> definitely not the. <laughs> oh, definitely the. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm talking like when I'm drunk with my mullet and I'm just like <laughs> eating pizza. Like, so, okay, someone please make a thirst trap edit of me just being absolutely unhinged. That me, me sounds, too. <laughs> yeah, that I sounds one. incredible. I think though a lot of us on video has been me very pregnant. <laughs> Yeah. But that's some people's thing. I don't know. <laughs> it is. That is. Sorry. Um, speaking of the, uh, have you seen JoJo Siwa's <laughs> music video? No, but I've seen people doing Dude, her choreography. Oh. <laughs> and they're like, the choreography is not bad, but JoJo is going crazy. Hey, I, that's you go hard, you go hard. Of, I love it. Is she six foot six or something? <laughs> She's so tall. <laughs> No. I think that is, uh, Jojo Siwa, I'm so sorry if you listen. This is this is all just silly, goofy times. This is fun and games. But I will say, <laughs> I always say the tallest person in the room is in charge. Except for if you're the tallest person. I just can't make you in charge. And I think I it's think because you're gonna, too fun. You're too, you're, you're having too much of a good time. <laughs> you're too silly to be in charge. You're, okay, we're silly. You're being silly. <laughs> And I and like I, that for I you. I'm here for that energy. I am. But you can't be in charge. But you're not in charge. <laughs> I'll tell you that. I'm not going to call you mom. Okay. I won't. Uh, you can't uh, unless it's a day that ends in Y. <laughs> mom. <laughs> Mommy. <laughs> Mommy Jojo. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, wait. There's another thing, too. She's of age. <laughs> well, I would hope. <laughs> I don't know. Because I did just watch a video where she was dry humping someone on the beach for, like, Four minutes. Four minutes? You got to watch that video. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It was, I was like, it's Jojo. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. Go. Oh, my goodness. Go. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Another thing I've been watching on TikTok that I think you need to know is it's called Nate the Hoof Guy. <laughs> Um, I like you telling me internet things. Didn't we do this one time? Yeah, for Patreon. We should yeah. do it as a regular episode. Yeah. So Nate, you tell me I'm, internet stuff and I tell you um, like reality, reality TV, TV stuff. stuff. You, yeah. We have to because I'm chronically online and you're chronically watching <laughs> reality TV. <laughs> yeah. I just so, talked to you about the mole a little bit ago. I love it. I'm rewatching it. Nate the Hoof Guy. I don't even know how I got on his... On Hoof Talk? <laughs> on Hoof Talk. <laughs> but he just like takes cattle. He like... Well, there's stuff that gets into cattle, cows, hooves. Yep. And he has to like scrape it out and then like. He does it hot. Oh my God. No, he's not hot. He's not. You don't ever see his face. Although he does narrate it. And he's like, hello and welcome back. I'm Nate the Hoof Guy. (laughs) It's very like a true crime show that he's about to introduce. Is his voice that high? No. Hello and welcome back. I'm Nate the Hoof Guy. Listen. Something like that. I have a thing with voices right now. He's got a really good voice. Really good voice. And you know what? You know what, my nail girl. I'm sorry. F- tell me about your hooves. Oh, that's that's he's. It's just it's giving like carpet scrubbing. Oh, it's okay. M- pimple okay. popping. It's very relaxing. So Got if you're it. looking to relax and do cozy cardio, <laughs> watch hoof videos as well. Watch Nate hoof the hoof talk. guy. <laughs> that's kind of and I cozy guess, cardio. Hoof hoofing <laughs> kind of transitions no. into what I was going to tell nails. you. Is, well, my nail girl. First of all, shout out, shout out, Kinsey. Oh, she did a great job. I. I freaking love her. Really pretty. She's she's just so darling mm-hmm. and so cute. And I am gonna I'm gonna shout her out. Do it. Fuck it. I I think I shout my nail girl out all the time. I've I have sister nail girls. <laughs> well, <laughs> sister nails because I have my regular nail girl. Um, she's on maternity leave because she had a baby, and so her sister now is doing mine, and they're it's wonderful. Both of them incredible people. 
I do love your nail people. Oh, yeah. Um, I just looked up her Instagram is Kinsey's Nailing It. I'll oh, yeah. I'll post something in Tagger. Oh yeah. She, because we matched my phone to my nails and she posted me holding my phone with my nails. Oh my god, I love that. <laughs> That's so cute. But um I she she and I are very different people in the sense that like uh she listens to country music sure. and I don't. Sure. And so now Oh, is this how we got from hoof talk to here? <laughs> I yes, get, I get it now. I was talking about how I want cows, uh-huh. and she's like, "Let me get this straight. You were wearing a John Deere sweatshirt, and you want cows, and you don't like country music." Mm-hmm. She's like, "Okay, all right, I'm gonna convince you. I'm gonna convince you to come <laughs> over to the dark side." You and like, I'm like, "Well, I like Cowboy Carter, so. <laughs> but I do love Cowboy Carter. It's fucking incredible. This, if any time for me to jump." jump on that train it's right now <laughs> yeah but also i don't i didn't want to love low country sounding voices oh but lock the door and turn. if you don't listen ah, that's what because they're also feral. so polite oh my god they're also so fucking polite oh and so when they say you're so welcome it's <laughs> just so that you get get out hey giddy up giddy <laughs> giddy up giddy on <laughs> okay dude the that song maybe lock them doors and that turn song the lights un- down unlocked low. something in me where i was like i think that i think that i'm i'm entering my country era country <laughs> yes i did show Corey cowboy carter and he was like listening the first like two or three he gives me nothing and i'm like uh-huh. okay i'm showing him like the ones the bangers we listen yep. to and then like he shuts it off and he goes this is fucking incredible <laughs> He goes, you want to go inside and get the speaker and listen to this? And I was like, on repeat? Yes, the fuck I do. Yes, I do. I was listening to it. I was showing Alex. And they were like, this is great. It's not country, but it's great. And I was like, you're fucking wrong. You're fucking wrong. You're wrong. And you're honestly ignorant. Yeah, you are. <laughs> well, so it's get, the truth. Figure it out. <laughs> so okay. It out. Shut up. Beyonce says it's country. It's country. Well, it's it's it goes back to its roots. Country yes. roots, which yes. guess what? Guess what? Guess <laughs> what, baby? Country roots does not come from white people. And that's uh-huh. what I'll tell you right now. Not a goddamn thing comes from white people. No. So that's where that originates from. And you can really hear it because mm-hmm. there's also like a like gospel yes folksy yes. element to it it's beautiful mm-hmm. i love that album um it's really good also another thing that Corey and i have been doing before we get into dreams because i think this has had an effect on my dreams mm. i watched love is blind with Corey. the rest of it because you made me start yes first of all i can tell here's the thing i cried at both the weddings uh-huh i'm sorry Scratch that, because I don't want to give this away to people. <laughs> no, spoiler alert, but at the same time, it's been out for how fucking long? Okay. I cried at the weddings. Okay. You can scratch that if you want to, Jerry, edit, so if you're mad, be mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, sometimes she tells me to take stuff out, and I don't. I know. <laughs> and other times, like, uh, you tell me to take stuff out, and I take some of it out, but people <laughs> don't know how much I've taken out, and that's yeah. funny to me. So, I cried at the weddings, and then I cried at another part of it, which is like, this is what I know I was exactly going. what part you're talking about, the, and it's it's the parents. Yes, yes. The conversation at the end. Mm-hmm. Woof. So that part of really me got wonders me. if that was real or if it was scripted. Because if it was scripted, give them Oscars. Oh, truly, truly. No, it felt very real. Yes, and but I. But also, what a what an incredibly like vulnerable conversation to have on camera. Incredible, absolutely insane. Um. And then, by the way, the next day I did start my period, so I understood why I cried so much at the end of that. But yeah. I ended up watching all of that besides the pods part. Here's the thing with Corey is he was like, this show is silly. You're silly for this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Third episode in, he's like, who are these people? What's going on? Uh-huh. I was sitting. And then he's like, do not watch this without me <laughs> by like the fifth episode. So yep. I was like, OK, we're fully invested in this together. But it was really cool because moments like that ended up like we had really good heart to heart. Yes talks about it and then i didn't let him watch the reunion because he decided he wants to go back and watch all previous seasons of love is blind oh my. you haven't watched the reunion no i watched it okay, i didn't okay, let okay, him okay, watch okay. it because i knew there were people that came back yes who yes, were yes, together yes. and i didn't want it to spoil because yep. he was like i think i want to watch this from the beginning and i was like well let me tell you something this season is actually the least unhinged yep so get fucking buckle up <laughs> yeah so we're on season one now and i was <laughs> It's crazy. The amount of predictions he's made and he's so confident in. Uh-huh. And then I'm like, and you're like, sure thing, brother. I hope that you're not watching this right now, Corey. And if you are, don't don't watch. But there are certain people he's saying that he's like, these are end game, end game. And I was like, 
Mm. Although he did say that if Lauren and Cameron don't get married, he's done watching. <laughs> I was like, that's fair. I that's feel like fair. we were all thinking, yeah. thinking Except, that. I mean, we were and we weren't because we were like, I can call him a serial killer, <laughs> sure. <laughs> he, gave, he had weird energy. Well, now that I'm watching it back with new eyes and we're having conversations <laughs> about it, I think Has that- Has he wrapped yet? Yes. <laughs> and Corey paused it. No. He paused it. And he looks at me and he goes, that was actually pretty fucking good. <laughs> This is not the reaction I thought that you would have. No. Serial killer. <laughs> both of you. The both of you. The both of you. But, um, yeah, I, I'm seeing things in a different light now that I know. So I can kind of see yeah. where I would have thought that. Yeah. But I understand more of who Lauren is as a person and why it seemed like, because Corey's like, wow, but he's always just trying to kiss her. He's just really trying to kiss her all the time. Yeah. And she almost seems pulled back from yep. that but i think it's just the dynamic they yes. have so that's what gave me that energy and i know this now and that's it okay that's all i have for you um now we're gonna talk about dreams well that actually remember when we were just eating and i was like oh, i'll tell you on the podcast yes okay so the pre-dream that i had today because sierra i called her after um i was all he had his preschool, or his, I'm sorry, I keep saying preschool. All he had his kindergarten screening today. And then, um, I don't know why I have such a hard time saying they're with their dad. That's okay. But, yeah. um, so I called her and I was like, okay, I can record whenever. But, uh, she's like, I got to pick up Noah and then I got to do my makeup and then I'll head in. I was like, just text me. I get home. You're like, I'm going to go home and dry off because well, it is I, a fucking monsoon in Ohio right now. It will stop raining and I was so wet. <laughs> Couldn't be wetter. <laughs> Couldn't be wetter. So I go home and I change out of my wet clothes and I put on comfy cozies mm -hmm. and I climb into bed mm -hmm. and then I start to fall asleep. Mm. And the things I told myself when I was about to fall asleep was like, we're not recording today. Sierra's going to call me and not want to do it. So you can go to sleep. That's ab absolutely fine. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> Sure. That's, that's absolutely not true. You have to record, Jerry. Yep. Get the fuck up. But like, I don't know what part of my, my subconscious head. was like, no. Nah, no, she, you can go to bed. Go to bed till, right now. till Monday, actually. So who knows when. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's like, what's happening in my subconscious? Y'all are fucking wild and honestly not helpful. <laughs> <laughs> they want you to go night night. That's what I'm telling you. Did you dream about anything then? I was watching Trixie. Okay. Tell, um, talk about... Uh, the new launch of like a they're not la they're not eyeliners they're like play makeup okay. they're not they're, oh, fuck I don't remember what they're called sure. I was sleeping okay <laughs> but <laughs> I was listening to her talk and so I didn't I don't know what was happening oh hell but no I didn't dream okay well here's the deal this is what I told Jerry to do so we had a lot of people who were commenting and uh enjoyed the dream parts that you told on the podcast last time and the little bit that we dove into those so I was like if you've had any intense dreams because I have been having dreams and I think it's a combination of like stress I had a stress, stress. I have had a I had a stress show dream I had a dream that we went out okay okay this is not one that we're gonna dive into because it's pretty clear where the fuck it's coming from yeah but um, I had a dream that we, so we're backstage getting ready at this beautiful theater. And so they bring us out because it's normally when we do sound check, we go out, we do the sound check. This is before anybody's get like let in, obviously. And we mm -hmm. see the whole theater. It's beautiful. There's like room for like 800 people. It's huge. Christ. Okay. Um, and there's like multiple rooms too, but we're like, we'll need like the center stage, yeah. obviously. So it'll be fine. And they were like, well, you didn't sell that many tickets. And we were like, do you want to put us on a? A side stage and they're like yeah. no we think it'll be fine up here so we go back and we're getting ready and they're like showtime is in 10 minutes just like drop it on us yeah. and you and i both don't have makeup done hair done yep. nothing and so we're like oh that's can we push back like yeah is there a way like yeah we'll push it back don't worry we'll seat people we'll get them drinks and stuff like take your time do your makeup so we do that uh-huh we go to go out and you know if peek behind the curtain. If you've seen, we can, a lot of times we can like peek and uh -huh. see people. So we do that. We end up peeking and there's like a ton of people. But we're up on like a balcony. Uh -huh. So we are peeking and they're sitting at tables. And then the guy is like, I'll bring you down to the stage. So he brings us down to the stage. We go past the people. They're holding our hands and like, you know, <laughs> yeah, they're yeah, like yeah. so excited. And then we go down like two levels uh -huh. to the stage 
where there's just seats like a auditorium almost uh-huh. set up and nobody's sitting no. there. <laughs> so you just have the people at the balcony and nobody in front. Everybody over here. <laughs> and we're like, hey, d- are we able to move these people down? And they're like, no. And we're like, awesome. So we're going to do it. But then people from the streets start coming in and sitting in those these empty the street seats. <laughs> <laughs> the empty seats. And these are people who are very obviously... Not don't for know us. us. <laughs> don't understand it. Yeah. So we start the show and they're giving us nothing. Up here, yeah. giving us so much, but we can barely hear them. Jesus. So it's freaking me out. Then you're like, mid-show, Jerry's playing videos that I have never seen before. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, wait, you're going off script. I don't know what these videos are. Where did you get these? <laughs> you're like, no, this is fun. It's going to be a good time. Yeah. Then you leaned over. You go, should we just... Should we just cut it? Should we just walk off? <laughs> should we cancel the show? And I was like, what? There's still people here. And you're like, I think we should just cut it. I think we should call it. <laughs> you did. Cut our losses. And I was like, okay, because at that point. Hang it up, Kevin. <laughs> at that point, we were. <laughs> we were about 45 minutes in and hadn't even started the first real video of the show. Oh my God. And I was like, all right, call it. And then people started booing us. And then I woke up. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, and I no. was like, hey. I don't appreciate this at all. <laughs> that was like my stress dream that I had in Texas. Do you remember? No, I think I do, but I can't remember. I had a dream that we had a show and we barely sold any tickets and we were getting ready in a classroom. <laughs> but there was people who are like, there's there's a few fangents who have been to so many fucking so shows. So many shows. And like we know them yes. by face and yes. name. And so those people were there yeah. and they were almost like working backstage, like okay. setting up, setting up something like someone was working merch, but we didn't have any merch. They're like, we're you, here for when you it guys starts are in our dreams. That's so cool. Isn't it? <laughs> and so then uh, it's now past time. Yeah. I was like, hey, we were supposed to go out an hour ago. <laughs> and they're like, all right, I guess you can start it. And so the music starts and we walk out and it it's like an auditorium again, yeah. but there's no seats. Oh, there's standing? like there's like an inflatable slide <laughs> and there's also people who are like they've brought lawn chairs or whatever and there's only like seven people dude that's it's always like the least amount of people. there's and there's the chairs are not in any order they're just kind of sporadically placed around mm-hmm. and i was like i don't feel like we can do the show like this i think we need to bring you back to the classroom so it's a more intimate <laughs> setting and it feels like a fuller room and so then i like took everyone back to the classroom yeah. and was showing it on the projector in the classroom and then somebody started recording and the camera was pointed at your butt and you were like what is this person doing and i was like hey hey no recording back here what you're doing is so fucking inappropriate you're weird for that you're weird for that who let you in here and then i couldn't find a bathroom and you know in my dreams was my fucking bathrooms dude you got bathroom issues i do i have big bathroom issues in my (laughs) dreams You do. I had a bathroom issue, issue in my dream that I had today, which I'll tell you about. Um, so we're not going to dive into those ones. But there was another one that I, we won't dive into because I feel like, again, this is... <laughs> I love that we're like, we're not diving into it, but we will tell you every detail of it. <laughs> I just think it's funny. This one is not funny. And I'm only telling you this because, to me, it was kind of funny. <laughs> only because it's a very clear meaning behind it. Okay. So I had a dream that I went to a party with Corey. And I was getting cozy in the corner. Me and him were just like, I don't really want to talk to people. There's this like big beanbag chair. Beanbag. Big (laughs) beanbag energy. And he's sitting on the couch beside me. We're just like chilling, drinking together Mm -hmm. away from everybody. And I hear a commotion and someone comes over and they're like, your ex is here at the party. And I was like, that's fine. I'm not worried about it. I'll just sit here. We're not moving. Like we're let him do his thing. We're going to do our thing. Like I'm not going to leave because I'm not a bitch. Yeah. (laughs) Like whatever. I deserve to be here. Yeah. So anyways, I hear commotion happening behind me and he's like, hey, what's up? And he's behind me and I look up and he leans down and just punches <gasps> me square in the face. Oh my God. i sitting down. And then I woke up because my baby kicked me in the head. Oh, okay. <laughs> so like that makes sense. You're like, I feel like I'm being abused by this baby. <laughs> And this man. <laughs> yeah. But um, I was like, I don't think we really have to delve into that. No. <laughs> that no, I think we know pretty. where. I think we know where that comes from. But I did write a couple down to okay. go over. And this one I didn't write down because I it just experienced it today. <laughs> okay. But I think we can look up parts of it. Okay. All right. So I'll tell you a little bit about the dream that I had today. It didn't make a lot of sense. Okay. But I feel like it's, we can pick little things out of it to 
look up. And then, mm-hmm. by the way, if you're still with us and you're like, I don't really give a fuck about your dreams or what they mean, stick around because I looked up an article that has like 10 to 15 of the most common nightmares and what they mean. So, you know what? I actually thought about when we were recording for the show, mm-hmm. we told our first nightmares that we could recall Uh and i thought about putting it in this episode where i'm like hey here's here's that and then just putting a clip from a clip that was on the editing room floor (laughs) that wasn't used for the (laughs) show (laughs) now we good all right so here's the deal i don't jesus crypt all right I don't know exactly how or why, but we were at the park that's near our house yes. and they were having some kind of like a festival fair carnival mm-hmm. rides are happening. All of rides. And this always happens to me. There is a roller coaster that is at that park mm-hmm. that we used to run because we were carnies. <laughs> like it's <laughs> yeah. very small. It's a children's roller coaster. Yeah. But I used to have dreams all the time that it was much larger mm-hmm. and that it would fall off the tracks. Yep. That was a constant nightmare for me was that the roller coaster would fall off to the tracks. To be fair, it did separate. It was rickety as fuck. <laughs> it the, did separate. Yeah. The cars did separate. The cars did separate and bang into each other. They did. So. <laughs> They're better now, I hope. Um, so that happens in the dream. And then all of a sudden, I'm like back with Corey's family and my family. You're there. All of Corey's family is there. There's a lot of people. And we're in like this trailer area. Okay separated but it's also like a thrift store so there's like <laughs> old clothes and stuff everywhere and people uh-huh. are looking and i'm like this is so cool and then i was like oh shit i have to <laughs> your thought was this is cool this is cool i'm like i like this look at all these cool shirts everywhere <laughs> so as i i'm like oh i have to go to the bathroom <laughs> So I run into the bathroom and I start unbuttoning and unzipping yep. and I, my pants are down at my waist uh-huh. a, about to sit on the toilet. And then I look up and I see a picture and it's a picture of our grandparents. And I was like, an old relic. Grandma, <laughs> what are you doing there? Grandmama. Why do they have you? By the oh, way, why they- do they have you? <laughs> like they captured her and now her soul is in this thrift store bathroom. <laughs> because the bathroom, by the way, is full of junk. There's just shit everywhere. It looks like almost a hoarder's place, but okay. it's like, it could almost be, it's it's organized chaos. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But yes. there is stuff everywhere. And yes. then just Goodwill. a small, <laughs> yeah, and then just a small toilet. Okay. So I'm looking up and then I'm like, Sierra, you need to go to the bathroom. And I go to sit down and I realize poopy is everywhere. I'm gone. <laughs> I, love that, I love that you saw poopy everywhere and thought that must have been for me. <laughs> well, it's on the backs of my legs. It's on the back of my pants that I've already pulled oh, no. down. It's just out of my body. And so then I'm thinking, what do I do? I got to clean this up. <laughs> well, you're in a thrift store. Just get new pants. So that's what I do. So I start cleaning myself up. I start putting on underwear or pants and then a new outfit. Underwear? All of it. Okay. I need all of it. While I'm there, thrift my store mom. Underwear. I know. It's not ideal, but I saw my grandma. <laughs> and she said, you shake your pants. <laughs> shake your pants about it. And I do whatever my grandmother says. <laughs> so... While I'm in there, my mother calls to me. And she's like, you okay in there? And I was like, I'm not. <laughs> I've never so been much. less okay in my life. And she goes, just so you know, Jesse McCartney and Jonathan Taylor Thomas are out here. <laughs> <laughs> and they asked to talk to you. <laughs> what in the 90s heartthrob is happening? <laughs> I was like. Were they that's... also donated to the thrift store? <laughs> I was like, this could be, mom, this could be a worse time for me if I can talk to them. I am covered in poopy. And my shit cover clothes are in here. And I was like, this is a great time. I'm hey, JTT, need- not today. I'm going to need a little help in here. And then I woke up. At that point, I you, never ju- got you to just got to gotta hope them. that Jesse McCartney's going to be like, I'm leaving. <laughs> never going to come back again. He's found somebody who's not covered in shit like me. <laughs> so anyways, and then I woke up. So I didn't know what all I could do with that. <laughs> but I yeah. am going to try to find something in this in this. Okay. About that. So I think number one, what we should go to maybe is roller coaster. Well, that's a good start. That's a good start. That's a good start. Because I don't know if I can do poopy. <laughs> well, you <laughs> might you might be able to do poopy. Let's see. Let's see. 
what are you going to do? <laughs> Poopy about it. I was going to do this on my laptop because it's a lot more organized, but uh-huh. our internet is taking it. Has taken a poopy on us. Yeah, so I don't know what we are. is happening with it. Okay, it's not really giving me a lot, but that's okay. To dream that you are riding a roller coaster represents life's frequent ups and downs. You're experiencing erratic behavior brought on by yourself or a situation. Okay, but I'm not in it. I'm watching it. Well, that could. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> that's actually um... okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Dreaming that a roller coaster is missing rails implies that you're lacking a support system in your life. It wasn't missing rails. It was falling off the rails. <laughs> it was going off the rails. If you dream that you're stuck on a roller coaster, that the roller coaster is broken down, it implies that a project or relationship has lost its momentum. But again, it's not me. I'm watching it. <laughs> oh, no. This is sad. This is sad. Perhaps is sad. it's starting. Perhaps it's about me perhaps what started out as something fun or exciting is slowed down alternatively a broken down roller coaster refers to a project or plan that was poorly thought out okay we don't have to talk about- <laughs> i don't know if that's i don't like that you're bearing your soul to me <laughs> like this right now i wasn't prepared maybe, i didn't have therapy this week maybe we shouldn't have started with the roller coasters <laughs> let's go to poop <laughs> wasn't me if i shit myself in my dream yeah, let's go there. What if it means, should I look up thrift store? <laughs> Probably. Or grandparents? Pro- look, all, look it all up. Look it all up. That's what I've always said. <laughs> I'm never not saying that. Look it all up. All right. I love that this was supposed to be something fun, and now it's like, <laughs> I'm actually just really concerned about Jerry. <laughs> I'm watching sub- her life fall apart. That's what my subconscious is doing. <laughs> Good. Poo. Please see feces. I'd love to. <laughs> So I always want to see feces. <laughs> They're like, listening. don't look up poopy. Be an adult. Look up feces. <laughs> Way to call me out like that, you fucking bitch. All right. <laughs> the aggression. <laughs> you fucking bitch. <laughs> you fucking piece of feces. <laughs> to see or come in contact with feces <laughs> signifies aspects <laughs> Of yourself that are dirty and negative, <laughs> in which you believe to be undesirable and repulsive. Like the fact that I shut myself sometimes. You need to acknowledge and express your feelings, even though it may be shameful. You know Hi, what? Hi, my name's Sierra, and sometimes I have bowel issues. But you know what? I don't think that that's what that is. What do you think it's about? I think it's connected to the roller coaster. Do you? I think that you feel guilty. For what? For being wait read it again oh you mean like perhaps that i i like i feel like you read it again read it again because i had it in my head and then you went you went full poopy (laughs) i was like i don't think that's it go ahead aspects of yourself that are dirty and negative and which you believe to be undesirable and repulsive i feel like you are afraid that you're not doing enough or that you're not um, doing things correctly or you're not doing like in in response to watching what's happening for oh, me you know what inner I mean child wise inner child wise or even like as my support system sure like that am makes I, sense like because I feel like there is a, a level of like questioning well and you're out of uh, oh I'm going to do my own right yeah. now. It feels like a loss of control a little yes. bit, which is like, I feel like I'm the roller coaster I'm watching is out of control. Mm-hmm. My bowels are out of control. <laughs> yeah. Every, the people that are there that I don't want to see me being poopy, I have no control over the fact yes. that they're here now and they're watching it. <gasps> yeah. You guys are JTT and Jesse McCartney. <laughs> Oh, and you're that's, watching. Me. That's wonderful. That's a high compliment. That for is you. a high compliment. Oh my god, you guys are so fucking hot. <laughs> it's so hot and so talented. That's I, for real. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. You know what I mean? I just feel like there's a level of what? Because then I couldn't clean it up. I was having a hard time cleaning it up, and it says to dream you're unable to dispose of the feces suggests you're unwilling to let go of your emotions. You have a tendency to hold in and keep your feelings to yourself. Oh, the fuck? And this is why I love this, because I did not expect to be fucking read like a book today. You know what I mean? I thought it was just about pooping myself. Oh, the end of that, though, was you need to acknowledge and express your feelings, release the negativity in your life. Alternatively, it may refer to someone who is anal retentive. (laughs) It's just uptight. Well, I don't feel like you're uptight. I don't think it's about me. Oh. And I don't think it's about you. Oh. (laughs) Oh. 
According to Freud, <laughs> feces is related to possession, pride, shame, money, or aggressive acts. So to dream your play... I wasn't playing with my feces. I wasn't playing with my feces. <laughs> Let's be clear. Let's, Let's be, be so, so fucking, fucking clear. clear. That was the last thing I was doing with my feces. <laughs> Not a bit of fun was being had. <laughs> no, I was so embarrassed. I think, okay, I think we figured that one out. Yeah, and honestly, it makes me a little bit sad because... Oh, it's okay. No, no, no. I know that there's a level of... Because of our connectedness and mm-hmm. how intertwined our lives are and how our personal lives do affect our professional lives. Sure. And there's a, there is, we are fucking tangled. We are. And what I a feel tangled like, web we weave. <laughs> we wove. <laughs> we wove that bitch. And, so tangled. And I feel like what I do affects you. And sure. so there is a level of like, I want. I want the best for Jerry. I want her to be happy. I want her to have all these things, but also I want it to not fuck shit up for me. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Yes. That does make sense. You know what I mean? Wow. And now my dream's like, I'm going to make you shit yourself in front of a room full of people to, to figure that the out. two hot guys that you love. <laughs> Dude, what the hell? All right, let's see if we have anything about thrifting, and then we'll move on. Did you write some down? I absolutely did not. Okay, I didn't think you would. <laughs> but honestly, ever since you told me, I haven't dreamt i was like, like i that? actually thought that i was gonna do that to you i was like i bet i put too much pressure on her on her euro whatever brain my euro brain <laughs> my <laughs> european brain no um it was almost like i was having so many stress dreams that it was it was like a level of chaos that i couldn't even put into yeah explanation that makes sense mine were all very because the one i had before this one that was kind of silly that I was like okay this is the one I could talk about the other yeah. one I wrote down it was not silly or funny I woke up in the middle of the night and I was like there's someone coming into my bedroom Oof. and I was like oh Corey's coming in late because the sun was starting to yeah. come up and I I looked over and he's laying beside me and so I fucking smacked him and I was like there's someone in the bedroom there's someone yeah. in the bedroom and he jumps up out of bed and is this a dream this is a dream oh Jesus okay but it felt so real yes. that I didn't think it was he jumps up out of bed and they start like wrestling. Yep. He goes to tackle the guy and the guy has a knife. And it's a guy that we graduated high school with. Okay. Which is like, why? But yeah. Um, and then he's like, get back on the bed. Once Corey sees he has the knife, he's like, okay, okay, okay. I'll go back on the bed. Also, Sawyer was not in this dream. So that's right. right. That's like the first thing that clocked that it was a dream to me. Um, because normally she's there punching you, <laughs> kicking, <laughs> kicking you. me straight in the fucking face, <laughs> yeah. kicking me straight in the nose. She broke. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then he's like, "Where's your money? Where's the money?" And we're like, "We don't carry cash." Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't have. Learn any- how to fucking get into my bank account. Yeah. I don't know. Hack me online like everyone else. Does. <laughs> yeah. Goddamn. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So then he was like, I know you have money here. And I was like, I don't have any. And then he was like, all right, I'm going to go. And he just like cuts a hole in my screen <laughs> in my window and jumps out. <laughs> and you're like, well. And then I woke up and I was like, what happened? <laughs> now I got to fix that. So all I had to look up was um, knife, robbery and knife. <laughs> and both of them were very similar to the roller. Co- it was like, you feel like your life is out of control. There's oh. things happening that you have no control over and you're scared about. Blah, yeah. blah, blah. So <laughs> what the fuck ever. So the last thing I looked up with was thrift. Uh uh-huh. store this is actually crazy so it says thrift shop to dream you are at a thrift shop suggests that there are things from your past experiences you can still learn from interesting interesting indeed interesting don't underestimate something that might be seemingly worthless the thrift shop may also symbolize ideas or skills you've forgotten and can draw from in a current situation interesting isn't it Damn, my subconscious is working overtime right now. Holy yeah, shit. for fucking me. <laughs> it's like, listen, Sierra, remember? Uh-huh. These are all things that you've gone through that yeah. you can you can pull from mm-hmm. in a supportive way yeah. and not feel like it I think my subconscious is trying to be like, "Hey, you're not going through this again." Right. So chill out. It's not you. It's not you this time. Right. Settle your your <laughs> What's that fucking part of your tits. body that's <laughs> selling your, <laughs> sell your tits? Woo! Um, no, like your nervous system, the yeah, part of you that just like, look. yeah, yeah, you're yeah, fucking parasympa, parasympa, something, parasympa. <laughs> you guys know what the fuck I'm talking about. That part, that part that like, yes, 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 does fight or flight, yes, because it's freaking out that what's happening might yep. be. 
Happening related to, to you, you when yeah. it's not but it's also like you can pull from this and still yes. learn from it and right. also you know your subconscious is really smart my subconscious is so fucking smart <laughs> so I'm wise. so fucking tired of it <laughs> because i need to i need rest <laughs> so yeah i need less dreams yeah that'd be great thank you okay so if you don't have any i the only one that i can remember is that i i vividly remember that I was, I thought that I was having sex. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I woke up and I was like, aw, that wasn't real. <laughs> that happens to me all so the time. That's, that's the only one that I can sex clearly. Sex dreams. <laughs> that's the only one I can clearly remember. Let's look it up. Because it felt so real because I could feel the person. I could feel like you hand holding. Sex dreams about someone that you've like never in any way the I way used to have a, I with, used to have sex dreams about all of my coworkers. I was just gonna say with the fucking cooks at my work <laughs> dude it was all way. of my co-teachers <laughs> I was like why am I why because I think that sex dreams aren't about sex and that's why I want to look into this yeah there's a lot of it that's like sometimes they are but a lot of times it's more about like you want more attention from that person and, or and like a different the person that it is with isn't actually it actually has nothing to do with that specific person yeah Oh, there's a lot of this. Here we go. Everybody, I'm going to read as much of this as I can because I think that sex dreams are b- very prevalent and can be very confusing because yeah. there can also be sex dreams that happen where you're like, I don't have any sexual feelings towards that person. That's fucking gross. That yeah. I would dream about that. Right. You know what I mean? Yep. Such as a coworker or something yeah. like that. So to dream about sex refers to the integration and merging of contrasting aspects of yourself. It represents psychological completion. You need to be more receptive and incorporate aspects of your dream sex partner into your own character. Okay, I like that. Consider the nature of the sex. I said, aww. (laughs) Was it passionate? Was it slow? Was it wild? Because the sex act parallels aspects of yourself that you want to express. Oh, that makes me want to cry because it was really gentle and it was really calm and it was really sweet and it was really just like easy that's and slow and soft well there, that's probably your subconscious saying you need more of that and recently I, truly i feel more of that in my yeah, life yeah 100 percent. a more direct interpretation of the dream may be uh your libido's way of telling you you've it's been too long since you had sex it may we'll- indicate repressed sexual desires and your needs for physical and emotional love mm. that makes sense mm-hmm. if you're looking you didn't dream of having it in a public place, correct? No, it was like in, in my room. Very, okay. To dream about sex with someone other than your spouse or significant <laughs> other. So this would be like if you, it's a coworker. Suggest dissatisfaction with the physical side of your relationship. <laughs> On the other hand, it may just be a harmless fantasy. Uh, okay. <laughs> to dream that you're having sex with an ex or someone who is not your current partner denotes your reservations about embarking into a new relationship or situation you may feel nervous blah 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 okay to dream you're having sex with a stranger this happens to me sometimes you're like i don't know who this person is but we're having a good time we are (laughs) represents uncertainty about what is ahead alternatively the dream allows you to experiment freely without having any hang-ups emotional baggage or preconceived notions associated with a person that you would know in such a scenario you're able to let loose and express your desires passions and emotions in particular if you dream of having sex with multiple partners at the same time it indicates that you're feeling detached in your personal relationship you feel that sex is just an act devoid of any emotion or passion perhaps your sex life has become too automated. One time I had, had a dream that I was with a stranger and he electrocuted me through my nipple rings. <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> What's that? Look up nipple rings and electrocution. <laughs> What's that about? This seems like something you would do with your friends, like drink wine on a Friday evening and I just wanted. like fucking look up dreams. That's what I wanted this So to I can't be. wait for you guys to listen to this on a Tuesday morning. <laughs> With your bowl of cereal and your cats. <laughs> yeah. If you're a heterosexual, heterosexual. If you're a heterosexual. <laughs> <laughs> and you dream you're having sex with someone of the same sex, it represents an expression of greater self-love and acceptance. Aww. You need to be better in touch with your feminine or masculine side. All right. Are we done? Oh, to dream so. you're having sex with your boss signifies your desire for authority and control. You're feeling empowered. That would be weird. That would be weird. Because we're our own bosses. (laughs) (laughs) Sometimes I dream about fucking myself. (laughs) I was like, as long as it's not me. (laughs) 
That was it's, mine. I'll tell you right now, it's never been you. <laughs> good. Hey, I can say that. Hey, I don't know why that offended me, but also good. <laughs> I can say that so confidently. I'm really self-conscious because I dyed my hair the other day and I know that it was inside my ear. Does my oh. ear look? Okay. No. <laughs> Make sure. All right. We're going to do some just quick. This is from a mattress website. <laughs> <laughs> and it was written by the Puffy editorial <laughs> team. So I don't know how fucking useful this is going to be. But again, yeah. it just feels like sleepover vibes where we're just talking to talk. Okay. Yeah. The number one nightmare. We're just talking to talk. <laughs> we're just, we're just talk. definitely different than every other week. <laughs> <laughs> okay. These aren't the most common, but they are the most searched nightmares. Okay. And what they could mean. So number one is being chased, which I think we've all had yes. that. Yes. Uh, one of the most common dreams, if you dream you're being chased by something, then it's an indicator that you're running away from something or someone in real life. Mm. Being chased could also be a sign that you're suppressing something within yourself, such as anger, jealousy, or resentment. If that's the case, then the chaser in one of these dreams might actually be a manifestation of your repressed emotions. Mm. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Two teeth falling out. Yep. I feel like we talk about this one all the time. I've had it. Mm-hmm. it. I had it only once. And the one time I dreamt it, it freaked me the fuck out. And I've never forgot it. I have dreamt about my teeth falling out a lot, but not recently. Yeah. Like my stress dreams. I used to have stress dreams all the time. Me too. I used to have dreams where people who were in the dream were people that I knew in my life, but they were completely different in the dream where I was like, why are you so wildly different than what I experience in real life? Yes. And why do I feel like I don't know who you are? Mm -hmm. And it's weird. It's weird how your subconscious can be talking to you Mm -hmm. in that way. Um, But in there would be those kind of stress dreams but then there would be the other kind of stress dreams that were like teeth falling out. I feel like I can't, I, I have gum in my mouth and I'm just pulling and pulling and pulling. Oh, I've um, never oh, heard of that one. I hate that <gasps> where I feel like I can't get the gum out of my mouth and I'm just pulling and pulling and pulling. And it's like, it feels like it's in my throat. I don't chew gum a lot. So maybe, the, but I've never had that one. That's horrifying. Wild. Horrifying. I, I have, have that more than the teeth. Roller coasters falling off. It's never me on them. It's always me yep. watching them. I have bleacher dreams, like watch people fall, watching people fall. I, well, I had bleachers in my dream with a fucking potato yeah 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 and the wiener (laughs) (laughs) and then i have tornado dreams yes i have tornado dreams as a stress dream i have dreams where i'm trying to get somewhere and i can't get Mm -hmm. there and then i have dreams um where equipment fails yes okay so teeth falling out can mean multiple things one interpretation indicates a change involving some form of loss in your life so mm-hmm. whether that's a breakup losing a job or even losing a significant amount of money that losing your teeth can be representative of that mm-hmm. number three is catching fire which is i've never had that dream i don't know if i've ever dreamt about fire i don't dream about fire often i'll tell you that no you, not- you're so concerned about it in, in your real life, life. <laughs> Like my subconscious is like, we'll leave that. Awake her has that under control. (laughs) That's so true. Um, Dreaming of something catching fire could mean that you could be aware of a change that could potentially cause problems. Um, This is from a psychoanalyst, Carl Jung, which believes that fire signifies transformation. So if you dream Mm. about something catching fire, it could either mean that you're about to deal with a situation that might pose problems or end up being beneficial in the long run. Mm, So just basically like a risk reward. But it's a, you know. Mm -hmm. Four is getting shot. So when I was talking about the Uh, dreams, Corey told me he had a very vivid nightmare that night. And it was, he got shot in it. Ew, weird that you both had like violent nightmares. Especially because his was like regarding going to work. And he was going to work as a nurse. And the place that he used to work is kind of in an area that's not super great. Like there are gunshots and stuff that happens up around that area well i feel like also there was a shooting at a place that was was it that one or was it ours i think right there were there were multiple that i know that it was like a i didn't remember if he worked at that specific one or if it was like a branch because i know there's multiple he worked at that one okay yes while there was a shooting but he wasn't there for right that one but he dreamt that he went in to like help people from the shooting and then as he was coming out he was shot himself What in the Grey's Anatomy? No shit. I was like, did you get that? Because I've been watching Grey's Anatomy, but he doesn't watch that one with me. Strictly love yeah. his wine. Well, we were, when I was watching The Mole last night, uh, it starts off with a plane that's crashed. 
And the person was like, um, th- they don't crash the plane. There's, they just arrive at oh, this yeah, place and there's yeah, a plane yeah. crash. Um, and someone was like, this is, uh, you, y'all got me in like a Jurassic Park type thing. And Alex was like, uh, it's more like lost. lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I said, or Grey's Anatomy. And they're like, yeah. Why did so many planes go down in that show? <laughs> So Why do they many? keep putting their doctors on planes that go down? <laughs> you gotta get to those hearts, man. <laughs> yeah. You gotta get to that. I think what I learned is I'm never. <laughs> I'm not gonna be a on doctor a on a plane. <laughs> I know several different kinds of planes. I'm never getting on. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. Nightmares about getting shot are common. Well, I wonder why in America. <laughs> um, That's true. So dreaming about getting shot could mean that you're fighting for survival in your day-to-day life. This could indicate you're struggling to achieve your goals or are stuck in an uncomfortable situation. Mm. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, Five tornadoes, obviously that's a big one, might mean your worries and anxieties are mounting. Tornadoes could also be symbolic of a challenging situation you can't escape. Whether you dream about white, red, or black tornado, they're all symbols. I didn't know there was different colors. I didn't either. But they're all symbols of an extreme emotion and a loss of control. So I wonder if you're yeah. like dreaming about red one, if it's like anger. Or mm. if you're dreaming of like a darker one, if it's like depression. Like yeah. the... That's, that's mine have always been like tornado colored <laughs> yeah mine look like straight tor- i actually never i rarely see the tornado i'm usually hiding from it and then it happens around me i normally see it as it's coming and mm-hmm. i'm trying to get as many people as i can into it's, the basement yeah yeah and yeah. as it's approaching i'm getting down there that's wild so falling dreams i have almost constantly those are my biggest one i think that's why that's a big fear of mine but um number six is falling And nightmares about falling are often associated with a loss of control over a situation in your life. It can also represent helplessness, vulnerability, the feeling of being overwhelmed. I'm normally not the one falling. I normally am watching Watching someone someone fall, fall. which is crazy because, again, I think it's just me trying to be like, I wish I could do something, do something to help. I hate to watch people in a situation that like. I know they're hurting, Mm -hmm. but obviously what the fuck can you do anything about it? Yeah. Yeah, because it's almost like when you see someone emotionally going through something that you wish you could help them with, you can't speed up a broken bone. No. You know what I mean? Like they and I'm just, a fixer. I'm a fixer. I want to be a fixer. I want to be a healer. have to get through it. And it's hard for me to watch someone suffer mm-hmm. through something that I know that th- is going to be good for them in the long run because right. it's all a learning. I told Noah that. I was like, every mistake, mistakes or something now I look forward to because he mm-hmm. was being a said about making a yeah. mistake and i'm like turn my losses into lessons that's what i'm saying yeah. <laughs> like i was like i look forward to mistakes because every mistake you can at least learn something yeah. and you can do better the next time and so they're never a bad thing in right. my books so don't look at them as like you failed you right. just learned something Drowning is number seven. Drowning in dreams can be a sign that you're feeling overwhelmed in some area of your life. Perhaps you're bogged down by endless assignments and tasks at work or you're struggling to maintain a healthy work-life balance. Mm. Whatever the case, if you dream about drowning, you may want to take a step back from your responsibilities and give yourself some time to decompress. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Very a lot of times, I don't, I don't do a lot of these, but I can't ever run. Yeah, that one. Well, that might be. That when might I try to one. run, it's almost like my legs don't work. You're like through jelly. It, kind well, of. it's almost like they just collapse. Mm. It's like it's not even that. Like I'm slow. It's just that they stop working. Wow. Well, this is. So this is about number eight is being attacked. Yeah. There are a few things scarier than dreaming about being attacked either by a stranger or an animal. This dream can arise if you have an intense fear of a specific situation. The attacker in the dream could represent something in your life you may be apprehensive mm. of. Number nine is a bug infestation, which Ooh. I don't know that I've ever dreamt of, but that's scary. Bug infestations, this is a crazy First fact. of all, I hate those two words together. B- bug infestation? Yeah, it just makes me feel like I, I need to vomit. I want to shower. Yeah. <laughs> they, this became a common nightmare at the height of the pandemic. Well, that, that makes, makes sense. sense. Dreaming about a bug infestation can have two interpretations. One is symbolic of feelings of guilt, minor irritations, or worries that are sneaking up on you. And on the other hand, um, these are associated with health problems, which is why many people reported having increasingly common nightmares about bugs oh. during the pandemic. Worried it makes me about sad. Yeah. But I, I mean, I know that I was, I was re- having lots of stress dreams during the <sighs> pandemic because I was pregnant. Yeah. 
and Talk also about- all like my job was gone like yeah. it was that was the most stressful yeah it's insane to think back on that year yes and that that was something we lived in feel weird real? real real no for sure because like i remember two o'clock every day wine with the wine except yes. I, couldn't, I couldn't wine with him because i was pregnant oh, i was whining but i was i was like i guess we're drinking it too <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're just i remember being glued to my tv just yep. terrified every single day yeah dude that was wild i remember hearing about the loss of my job at your house and yep. then being like well that's it mm-hmm. holy shit yeah we watched that together, together. When they shut down the restaurants yeah yep. number 10 is being naked in public you know what i'm sorry i feel like th- i'm not saying that the pandemic happened for us however <laughs> i do feel like it worked for us no it definitely did because i feel like I we just wouldn't about that. have we wouldn't have done been, this yeah because it was almost like everything was taken away literally we had this and that was it that was all we had mm-hmm. truly to look forward to to do to put our efforts into i just told Corey that and i said can you imagine if i would have still went back to if i would have went back to serving after they like allowed me to get my job yeah. back can you imagine i probably wouldn't have gone through with the podcast mm-hmm. because it wasn't popping off then yep and then just think of how miserable I would probably be right now. How we, how miserable we both would be in our situations. Because I would probably, I don't know that we would have had Sawyer because I wouldn't have ever been able yeah. to build myself up to a place where I would feel financially comfortable to have another kid. And like, it's just crazy it to is think wild. about that it all kind of worked out. It did. It's wild. Okay. Being naked in public is a sign that you're feeling vulnerable and exposed. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Perhaps the secret was revealed. You're feeling embarrassed. I never have naked in public dreams. I don't think I do either. But I think that's because I don't get embarrassed very easily. And I'm very vulnerable all the time. And that's not something I'm ashamed of. Because it's just, to me, it's like, it is what it is. I just talked to you about shitting myself. Yeah. (laughs) So, um, about information that came to light. Like other common nightmares, dreaming about being naked could have many other interpretations. It could also mean that you've been dishonest about something and are struggling to keep it hidden. Mm. Okay, well, that makes sense that I wouldn't have that. Cause I yeah, feel like, again, that makes me feel good. I don't. That, <laughs> that I don't have that. Yeah. Number 11 is being trapped in a dream. Though it may sound unusual, dreaming about being trapped in a dream is a very common nightmare. This dream might mean you're trying hard to evade something that needs to be confronted, whether that's a person or an emotion. Dreaming about being stuck in a dream could also be a sign that you're feeling trapped in a real life situation. Perhaps you're worried about not advancing in your career or feeling like your personal relationships are going no- nowhere. I have a lot of dreams where I, whenever I need to like go somewhere, mm-hmm. like I either need to go to a different floor or I need to walk through a hallway it's like a tube yes and i have to squeeze through it it's that so claustrophobic? fucking small yeah yeah, yeah. like Coraline. like when there's, yes yeah that's exactly what it is and it's that is i that i would consider a stress dream as well and a nightmare Especially for myself because you have claustrophobia yes. so that is a very like i don't like this feeling at all mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I it's almost to- like i have to get through it i have in the dream it's not like i'm panicking it's almost like you don't have a choice but to keep going through it yeah. even even though you're uncomfortable, even though it sucks, even though you're scared, you you just have to get to that other side of it. That I have those, but in planes. And it's weird, <clears throat> but I always have a dream about a plane where I'm in the plane and then it takes off and it's like rocketing upwards. Yep. And then all of a sudden they're like, you have to fly the plane. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't know how to do that. They're, they're like, it's that or we're falling to the ground. And like, I'm like, well, well, get, well, get me on this control. <laughs> I guess I'm about to learn. I guess I'm in this fucking yeah. pitch. And what I'm learning about myself right now is that I think I need to be in control. <laughs> I think I have control I have issues. Control issues. Remember when we thought I was the one with control issues? <laughs> well, I think it's just from spending so much time in my life not yeah. having it. Now that I've felt a yes. little bit in my life, I think if I'm delving deep into myself psycho- psychologically, yeah. it's like now that I've had that taste of being able to control my life, I mm-hmm. don't want to lose it. Yeah. I'm very scared of going back to that point where I have none. I completely get that. Yeah. Number 12 is earthquakes. Dreaming about earthquakes can be indicative of some instability in your life. Perhaps something at work or in your personal life is falling apart and you're unsure of how to deal with the change. I don't think I've ever dreamed about earthquakes. And maybe that's because we don't experience them. I don't know. Uh, It could also be reflective of a change in routine or structure. For instance, if you've recently moved to a new city or country, you might find yourself missing the stability of your old life because you're struggling. See, I have the stability dreams are always associated with tornadoes for yeah. me instead of earthquakes but yeah. that's probably because we've experienced yeah, tornadoes and not, yeah. <laughs> not earthquakes 
All right, couple more. 13 is getting lost. Nightmares about getting lost could be a sign that you're feeling frustrated about your, a situation you're navigating through. It might mean that you're feeling unsettled because of the problem um, that you're in being new, unpredictable, and scary, and not knowing where you're going is indicative of a lack of direction that you feel in yeah. your real life. 14 is being late. I have these dreams all yes. the time. That's all common. the time mm-hmm. that I'm late. This is the, one of the most common nightmares among those who go to work or go to school. Dreams about being late could mean you're feeling some kind of pressure in your life. Oh, no shit. No shit. <laughs> Conversely, it could also be a subconscious expression of regret or frustration at a missed opportunity. Mm. Perhaps you were unprepared for a meeting, which caused you to lose out on a major promotion, resulting in feelings of anger towards yourself. So it's a little bit of... That makes me sad if I'm ever angry towards myself. No shit. Okay, number 15 is hurricanes, which again, I've never had, but yeah. I think, again, these are uh-huh. similar to tornadoes. Yeah, I feel like they could have just like lumped all natural disasters kind yeah. of together. Yeah. Um, similar to tornadoes, hurricanes are representative of intense emotions surrounding events in your life. Yeah. Dream of, about a hurricane could be your subconscious way of warning yourself that you need to be wary of destructive behaviors or conflicts either mm. from yourself or from others towards you. I wonder if anyone I wonder if people look this stuff up if they do dream because I know a lot of people don't dream. Mm-hmm. But I wonder if people who do dream do look into this and actually use it as a form of self-reflection or if they just think they're fucking watching movies in their sleep. You know, I know what I mean? I kind of wish that people... I do, especially after this one. I, I think that mine are definitely telling me something. Yes. Anytime I have one that's like really intense, I try to look it up because I'm like, that, you're trying to tell yes. me something. And I realize now all of the ones that were like reoccurring and had reoccurring mm-hmm. themes that it, my subconscious was trying to tell me something and I was just severely in denial about it yeah, in my yeah, waking yeah. life. And you don't want it to be right. reality. What right. you're yeah. Um but being I'll, told. Yeah. And I think that learning about that and also I think it helps and makes it easier for you to notice shit in your waking life. Yes. And be reflective then, then. which then prevents you from having to shit on yourself in your dream and figure out what's that about <laughs> no shit in front of two heartthrobs <laughs> yeah i'll never oh recover from deadness <laughs> um so yeah the end of that is if you dream of a hurricane destroying something it could indicate you're dealing with a conflict at work or home and that you may be feeling scared to address it but yeah. that it's something that needs addressed so yeah i feel like they're all pretty again nightmares and stress dreams are all going to be kind of yeah about the same thing yeah, it's just funny how our brains manifest it to like yeah how do, how they try and communicate yeah, it to, to us. us. I am so fascinated by dreams, and maybe eventually we'll get somebody who's like a dream expert if that's even a thing on here. To Definitely like, is because someone on TikTok reached out, and then that was over. Oh, that's right, like two years ago. Remember oh when God, they I found about my, that? When they found my dream about me nursing puppies. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I think this all has a deeper meaning. Yeah. Well, we hope you guys had a silly goofy time with us uh, yeah. talking about dreams. Uh, and if you have any reoccurring dream themes, leave it in the comments below. <laughs> Please. And, and let us know if you looked it up, what it might say about you. Yeah, we want to know. I thought it was really cool when people did that with angel numbers. It I was, loved it. It was so fun to read through and yes. see how everyone connected with everything. But Yes. Um, also, um, if you want to head over to ladiesandtangents.com, mm-hmm. we have merch that's available now. Yep. Although... It, it came out today and you guys crashed the site. You so. did. You did. And we're already out of stock in sizes. So we're doing our best. It is, uh, we're working with a merch company. So it's not us doing it. So mm-hmm. they can, they're doing their best. Yeah. But um, there will be more. It's going to restock eventually. So just keep an eye out. If you didn't get something that you wanted in your size, keep an eye out for yeah. the site. And also, if you want to come to either our show in Chicago or our show in Seattle, we mm-hmm. still have tickets available for that as well. So, And the, those are those are going to be our biggest shows. They are- so if you want to be a part of something that's going to be insane. Huge. Grab one of the tickets that's left Please there. Please come. So. When they told us the size of the theaters, we were like, there's not, we're not even going to fill up half of the mm-hmm. size of that. And we're at 70% now at both yeah. of those, which is fucking insane to even think about. So it is going to be electric. I keep Googling, what does 500 people look like? It's <laughs> insane. I know. It's be I know. insane. So um, thanks for hanging out, everybody. We love you so much. And we'll see you next week. All right. We're out. Goodbye. Goodbye.